Hello. Have you ever wanted to do some science with your telescope and astronomical camera or maybe just a standard DSLR without a telescope at all? It's really easy to do. I'd like to introduce you to this, which is the star analyzer grating. Now the grating comes mounted in this filter cell, which you then just screw directly onto your eyepiece or your static fits camera or astronomical video camera or, as I said, just a plain DSLR. When you do that, it splits the light so that you can study the stars just like professional scientists do. Now before I show you how we mount this grating, let's take a look at some of the results that you can easily get. Let's start with one of my favorites. Each of these star analyzer spectra is a different O be a fine girl kiss me star. At the top are the hot type B stars and at the bottom are the cool type M stars. This was captured with just a 9-inch telescope and an astronomical video camera, but you could do the same with a DSLR or Fitz camera too. Notice that each star spectrum is a little different because they're all different temperatures. For example, this hydrogen beta line is strongest on this type A star, which is our familiar Alpha Lyra. Now, don't worry, you don't need to become an astrophysicist to do this kind of thing. It's really pretty simple and there's a lot of help on the web. And you know what? This kind of thing makes a great high school science project. Okay, let's look at a different example now. This is a very hot star called a wolf Rye star. Because it's at the end of its life, it's shedding its outer shell. That means we can see into the core of the star. With just a DSLR and a star analyzer, you can capture this star's spectrum. You'll be able to see the glowing carbon from the core, and you can detect the effects of the massive stellar winds as this star blows off its outer shell. My experience is that when I capture this kind of data, my understanding of the stars grows in leaps and bounds. Now here's an example that's much closer to home. With a star analyzer on almost any astronomical camera, it's easy to detect the methane in the atmosphere of Neptune. Just a few decades ago, this kind of thing was only possible with professional instruments. Now, all it takes is a small telescope and astronomical camera. So this is an animation of an exploding star. A type 2 supernova happens when the star's internal furnace runs out of fuel and its core collapses under the force of gravity. A shock wave from the implosion rushes outward and the star explodes. For a short while, it's brighter than all of the stars in the galaxy. With just an 8-inch telescope and a cooled Fitz camera, just 15 minutes of integration time will capture the supernova spectrum. You can easily determine what type of supernova it is, and by observing the Doppler shift in the spectrum, you can measure how many millions of miles per hour its shell is racing towards us. Okay, so here's our last example. This one is a quasar, a black hole with an accretion disk. It's four trillion times brighter than the sun, but it's also billions of light years away. It's so distant that we can detect the redshift due to the cosmological expansion of the universe. With the same equipment you'd use on a supernova, you can easily capture the quasar spectrum and then measure its redshift. From that, you can determine its distance. So this stuff isn't hard. Amateurs do it all the time. And those are some pretty exciting examples, aren't they? Now, just for a moment, let's look at how we use the star analyzer grading to get these kinds of results. So this is a typical wide field view of Orion's belt when viewed through the star analyzer grating. We can see the individual stars, and on each star we can see a rainbow called a spectrum. The star analyzer grating splits the starlight, just like a prism would do, to create each spectrum. And each spectrum contains information about the star. Once we've captured that image, we then look at it in software. We're going to look at a program named RSpec here. Now there on the left is the star, and on the right is the spectrum. Now you don't need to use a color camera, that just happens to be the image that we're using here. We're pretty far zoomed in. Now what the software does is plot the intensity of this region over in the graph here on the right. That peak there is the star, 
and this region over here is the spectrum. We won't get into a lot of detail here, but that dip right there in the graph corresponds to a gap in the rainbow here. And by analyzing this graph, we can tell all sorts of information about the star. Its temperature, some of the materials that are on it, the star type. It's really easy to use. You know, what always amazes me is just how easy it is for amateurs with such simple equipment to capture and interpret the specter of stars. It doesn't require dark sky sights or a lot of aperture. I've seen amateurs do this with a six inch refractor and a webcam. So I've got here an astronomical video camera. The neat thing about this camera is that when you use a video camera with the RSpec software, the spectrum is live. That means you've got a lot of opportunity to do public outreach and education. So when we take the star analyzer grating, we just screw it onto the nose piece of our camera. Most cameras come with a nose piece that's about the right length. There's nothing exact about it. Now, you might be using a static cooled fits camera. It may have a nose piece that works for you, or perhaps you're using a filter wheel. You can mount the grating in a filter wheel, and the site talks more about how to mount it so it's approximately the right distance from your sensor. And finally, we've got our beloved DSLRs. Now it's easy, and there's two ways to use a DSLR. The first is to use this thread adapter and thread it on to our camera's lens cap threads, and then just thread our grating right onto it. Now we're ready to go. We can capture spectra, we can piggyback the camera, we can even use the camera on a static tripod without tracking and capture the spectra of bright stars. Now there's a second way that a lot of us use our cameras, and of course, that's without the lens, we're using our telescope as the lens. And for that, if you have your T-ring on the camera already, you just use a different adapter that we have that goes into the T-ring threads, and then you thread the star analyzer into it, and then mount this on your telescope. So like I said when we started, wouldn't you like to do some science with your telescope or your DSLR? It's easy to do and it's inexpensive. Check out our site, we love to answer questions, and I look forward to hearing from you that you've captured your first star spectrum.